Welcome to Inside the Honors College, where we believe that wisdom and virtue is found when we learn together. Join us as we take an inside look at a community dedicated to educating the next generation of disciples and scholars. I'm Taina Esteves. And I'm Abby DeVos. And today we were talking to, and stay with me folks, because this office <laughs> name is a little bit of a mouthful, the Center for Career and Community Engaged Learning. Indeed a mouthful, but such a helpful, incredible office. They're going to chat all about it, but something I found really unique about this office is they offer fantastic information for every single year you are in school. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a freshman, what are you planning on doing for the next year? Internships, anything like that. Whether Mm -hmm. it's a junior with study away or a senior with what am I doing post-grad? They have something for every single age and year. Absolutely. Well, don't wanna take up too much of the content and there's a lot to get into, so let's jump right in. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you both so much for being here with me this morning. How are you both doing? Great. Thank you for having us. Ready to rock and roll. Wonderful. I've been doing this thing, this this series, asking my viewers, my viewers, my audience, how are they feeling based off of a little thumb scale? I mean, the people listening won't be able to see what that thumb scale is. Oh. So it'll really depend on how do you want to describe where your thumbs are at at the moment. Oh, man. I'm going to go. My thumb? I'm going up. All the way up? She's going yeah. straight up. Yeah. Straight up? I would say it's like, like it's midday, 45? right? So <laughs> if I have if I have lunch in me, it'll be right at the top. There so you go. Right after this, I'll be good to go. 100%. Yes. We love catching people right before lunch. That means they have energy and urgency, which we love. <laughs> well, wonderful. Could you both start us off with an introduction of your title names, and then we'll get into our questions. Sure. My name is Erin Thorpe. I'm serving as the interim director for the Center for Career and Community Engaged Learning, or we go by CSEL for short. Awesome. And my name is Andre Argyes. I am the Associate Director of Career Development in the CSEL office. Wonderful. CSEL? CSEL. CSEL. Okay, great. I'm, I was like, I'm hearing CSEL, and I was like, I don't know if that's like a fun name that you guys have. CSEL. Beautiful, beautiful. So starting us off with our fun questions. First off, does your office offer any snacks? Ooh. Oh, yeah. We definitely need to keep a stock of (laughs) tea and coffee. Um, I love having morning coffee. And so come by our office anytime. Come by, you make yourself a hot cup of tea, coffee, stick around or take it with you. Of course, you asked the snack question right before lunch. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It helps with the urgency. You got (sighs) to think about it. (laughs) Tina, okay. I'm a food person. You are. Well, I'm going to do a quick... Go for it. Go for it. Shameless plug. Please. For working in our office. Mm -hmm. Because during... (laughs) During our new student onboarding and new student training, um, we actually have a Google form that we send out to our student workers and we ask them questions. What's your favorite unhealthy snack? What's your favorite sweet treat? What's your favorite healthy snack? Right. We ask about, you know, the dietary restrictions and all that. But we like to spoil our team. Mm -hmm. So on birthdays or just if a supervisor wants to, you know, give them a little little something nice, we... uh, Definitely take care of each other with the snacks. We love our student workers. And we love our snacks. Yeah. Listen, food is a love language. I'm telling you, there's six. I mean, there's more than six, honestly. But food should be included in there. Uh, Next question. Do you have a favorite spot in your office? That can be a chair. That can be a metaphor for the energy that your office provides in a certain space. It can be either or. I do love our conference room. Beautiful. Over the summer, everybody helped kind of get some things organized. And we just have a sign in our conference room that says, you got this. You can't help but sit there and in, in the midst of a meeting making, you know, yeah. <laughs> brainstorming ideas, options. But then you look at the wall, you know what? We got this. Yay. I love that. Um, well, my office is, it quickly becomes the warmest office in the whole building, mm. just where the sun is located at the end of the day. So for me, we actually have um, one of our other offices has our handshake hand chair, right? So have you ever seen those chairs yeah. that are shaped like a hand and it's hand. yellow? Oh yeah. dear. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> hey, I work with career development. We're all about handshake, that For career sure. platform. So that's our handshake chair. Um, I would say that's a nice thinking chair, right? And yeah. I, I find a way to make it feel comfortable. So. There you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I hear it, I hear it. And then our final close for our, our fun questions at the top. If there were three words that you had to describe your office, what three words would those be? We'll start over here with Aaron. Okay, I'd have to go with transformative experiential learning. Mm. And we can circle back around to that if you want, because sure. I can talk about experiential learning all day long. Yeah. But our department, our center has so many different services. But the thing that pulls us all together is the experiential learning. And so I love that. I love that concept. That's what we're all about. We're passionate about it. So yeah, I'd 
go with transformative experiential learning. 100%. We will circle back to that for sure. Hmm. Awesome. Um, one word, I'm just going to throw it out there, diverse, right? Yeah. So we have student workers internationally that work in our office. Uh, we have first generation college students that are working in our office. Um, and so I love that aspect of just the various people groups, you know, various student types. Mm -hmm. uh, we have graduate students, we have undergraduate students. Um, so I would say diverse is um, one of my favorite words to describe. Uh, genuine, I just think everybody's just absolutely genuine. The you know, it's normal to just say, how was your weekend? And just end up talking for 10 minutes. And you're like, we got to get work done. But <laughs> here we are, right? Just well, yeah, genuinely checking in on each other. Um, and I think the work ethic, right? So hardworking, it's, uh, you know, cliche, right? Every office wants to believe that they have a hardworking team. But, um, you know, we are a, a small but mighty team and we get a lot done. So really proud of, of our team. Yeah. Well, what a beautiful segue talking to the team in the office. We'll circle back around to experiential learning and then kind of go into a little bit of the actual, you know, services. When you walk in, what can you expect as a student? So we'll start off with that. Yeah. So if you're thinking about experiential learning, because our, our name, and that's why we even go by our nickname CSEL, because yeah. it's kind of long, right? <laughs> Anything past four syllables, you got to end up having a short, um, <laughs> you know, nickname for it. But Center for Career and Community Engaged Learning, we do want students to know what they can find at CSEL, because they're going to find career development service, they're going to find community advancement programs, they're going to find academic service learning courses, and they're going to find Study Away. Um, so yeah, there's a lot packed in there. So like Andre was saying, we do kind of refer to us, we're a small but mighty team. Yeah. Getting, getting a lot done. Absolutely. Uh, so then talking about some of the like practical experience, especially as like a senior who was like, oh, you know, mm. traveling away, what does that look like? Um, you'd mentioned experiential learning as in like places in campus that you can do to like actually go out into the city. What does that like practically look like? Yeah. So experiential learning, it's one of the, the core pedagogies that AP was about where students are not just here to get a theoretical degree. No matter what discipline you're in, there's experiential learning that can supplement that and give you that whole well-rounded, holistic type of education mm -hmm. that APU really wants to provide for students. Mm -hmm. So anything that is going to get students out into the community so that you're not doing a 180 when you graduate, you're, you know, that that time in with an employer in the community, getting hands on experience with people is happening all throughout your degree. It's not like this foreign thing come graduation that we're like, oh, no, I'm going out into the real world. It's like, oh, no, no. If you've been utilizing all of APU's opportunities, you've been in the whole the real world the whole time. Mm, I love that. I love that, especially as like most of my friends are also seniors right now thinking about what does it mean post-grad life. Uh, what would you say is one of the most common reasons that people would come into your office? Like what are the most common supports that you guys offer? Yeah, it's... Uh... <laughs> I mean, there is a lot, right? For sure. And talk so, about it. Talk about it. So I'll just talk from my end, right? So we have four service areas, right? And so the one that I oversee is our career development. And one of the things that I really want honors college students to, to really understand is that career development at APU is not just something that you do your graduating semester, right? Like, I need to land a job. So let's, you know, it's my last semester here. Let's figure out my resume. No, career development is an ongoing process, right? And so from the first days in your program, even as alumni, so your students after they graduate, they can utilize our offices. But a lot of students come to us for one on one consulting appointments, right? So if they want to look at their resume, update their LinkedIn page, I don't know, Tayin, if you got a LinkedIn page. Listen, shout out to my mom for making me always have my LinkedIn <laughs> there page you updated, go. please. You know <laughs> I had good faith. Yeah. And so send uh, my thanks to your mom. Um, LinkedIn page, if it's grad school prep, right? Cover letter, all of that. We do free headshots as well. If you need to get that updated headshot for that LinkedIn. Uh, but appointments, students will come in. Um, a lot of times we'll partner with faculty and we'll do workshops, right? So they'll bring us into classes and we'll talk about best tips and tricks for resume writing and, um, you know, interviewing job and um, the, like the job search or negotiating a salary. Like mm -hmm. how terrifying does that sound, right? Mm -hmm. As a college student to negotiate a salary, um, but also events. And so students want to connect with employers. They want to figure out who's hiring, what internships are available. And so career development, we do that. Um, we specialize in it. We want to make ourselves available to students. We take walk-ins, you know, students can come in. We help them with scheduling appointments um, and all of that. 
Another would be our uh, community advancement program. So that's our second mm -hmm. service area um, that will get students walking in saying, hey, I'm looking for a job. Um, I'm federal work study eligible, right? So these students and their financial aid package, it tells them that they have federal work study. And a lot of them don't know what that means. They just know I need to work. Uh, and so we've partnered with local uh, organizations, um, walking distance from APU. So you don't have to hop in a car and go Say drive. again, walking right? distance. Walking as a, as distance. a college student with no car, we love to hear that phrase. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. And so students can work anywhere from like five to 12 hours a week um, doing meaningful work, right? So it's something that We've partnered with the, these organizations. They're they're desperate for APU students. They love APU students, um, and so they're able to get paid. Keyword paid, mm -hmm. right? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Say that, it again. That's get right. Paid. Get paid. <laughs> Close to campus. All those good things. So uh, we'll get students that walk in asking about those opportunities as well. So those are just two. We have two other ones. I don't know if Aaron wants to chime in here. Yeah, there's so much we can share about. Um, <laughs> but just hopping on what Andre was saying, um, if students have really enjoyed some of their service time getting to know um, uh, people in the community, hands-on work. It's like, man, continue that on. And it can actually be a paid job as well. So um, yeah, we'd love for students to recognize when that's an opportunity for them. Um, yeah, so I don't know if you want us to keep going. No, but, please okay, do. So is, yeah, I know you guys, you guys got, got a lot of stuff in your office, by all yeah. means. I heard we had an hour, right? An yeah, hour? The entire time. The entire oh, time. Oh, it was like 15 minutes. All right, yeah. my bad, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Andre Cover Career and Community Advancement Programs, we also have academic service learning courses and Study Away. Beautiful. So when you're thinking about academic service learning courses, um, that is, again, one of those things where APU is wanting that hands-on experiential learning so that all of our service learning courses, it's faculty that are taking that initiative to partner with us to go out and match, okay, what are students meant to learn in this course? And let's just not learn about it in the classroom setting, but let's actually learn about it, do it, do it, learn about it some more, do it some more, mm -hmm. try out some things. Um, so our academic service learning courses, we want to make sure that it is reciprocal. Um, there is a difference between volunteerism and uh, academic service learning. So we want to make sure that we're just not about APU's agenda for the community. But yet this is us being very intentional with some really wonderful people and orgs that exist really near APU and saying, hey, how can we team up together to make a difference? So we're hitting what students need and need to learn, but also hitting a legit <laughs> need in the community yeah. at the exact same time. So um, sometimes there's some challenge there because we can't just go out and just do our own things. And say, oh, well, APU wants to see this happen. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. We're, we're talking to the community. We're listening mm -hmm. and we're saying, OK, what can we do together that's mutually reciprocal? Mm -hmm. yeah. So those are academic service learning courses. Yeah. Um, so of all the 120 credits that students are meant to get, we're hoping that a lot of them are integrated into why they came to APU mm -hmm. for the degree that they're here to study and God raising up the next generation of leaders yeah. to um, have that be a part of their coursework here. Yeah. So just a little bit of a selfish clarification question on my end, because it sounds like you can take specific courses to help do the service learning portion throughout your time at APU. Yes. So... Depending on your major, right. some majors have a lot of academic service learning yeah. already integrated, and uh, or there maybe there's not a lot of choice. Right? Yeah. <laughs> You're just you sign up for those courses or the, for that major, and it's all plugged in there for you. Yeah. But even your GE classes, if you're looking for electives, or uh, my hope is that you're excited that if your degree program does have them already integrated, because there's some wonderful opportunities laid out there. But let's say if you are taking some classes and you have some options, when you're signing up for classes, look for the little SL indicator, because that means that course is going to have academic service learning um, integrated in there for you. It could be anywhere from five credits. There's either five, 10, 15, or 30 credits attached to any course that has that SL indicator. Yeah. Yeah. I say that was selfish because as a BFA in honors, we don't have any service learning yet. So a little bit, a little bit of like a sidetrack there. Is there anything that you guys would like recommend for students who maybe don't have that integrated mm -hmm. and maybe are working on a little bit of like a time constraint? Again, selfish as a student who has a lot to do, but wants to be involved and kind of wants to be, you know, integrated into those service learning opportunities. Is there anything you could speak to that experience a little bit about? Yeah, that is so nice when it is integrated. Yeah. And if you're finding that it's not, you're 
your particular <laughs> classes, do let your voice be heard. Yeah. You know, let um, let your department know what you're interested in because we would love to see that happen over time. Perfect. But in the meantime, take advantage of all other courses um, that are going on. So if you do have electives or GEs that you need to do, um, just you'd be intentional for looking for that SL indicator. Beautiful. Beautiful. Love that. Anything you'd like to add, Andre? I echo my colleagues. Yeah, voice. no, it was she beautifully was said. It was oh, beautifully yeah. said. I was literally in my head like, what else could I say? What else could yeah, I say? Yeah, no, it was it good. No, it was great. I agree. Uh, well, as we're coming a little bit to the close here, is there any last piece of advice that you would like to share with the student body? Anything about your office that you think is underutilized, a specific resource or service that you're like, nobody uses this, but it's so great and they should. Um, or even just like a piece of advice about how to operate as a student in like a school that has service learning, wants to push that experience, uh, kind of a, a encapsulating all type of question there. Whatever you guys kind of want to leave with our audience. I'd love to say prayerfully consider what summer if Oxford can be a good fit for you. Mm. Take because we also manage study away. Yes. Um, we'd love to see students prayerfully consider if that's a good fit for them. Mm-hmm. Oxford does have semester options and summer options. So your best bet with a lot of the services we provide through our office is to really plan early because we are on the academic side of the house. So everything we do usually has some types of, you know, academics involved, things like that. So we'd love to see students map it out um, early so you can really maximize everything. Yeah. So this is the office that we would go to for questions about what the Oxford semester study away situation looks like, right? Is that something you could find on your website or is that something Mm -hmm. that you should kind of like go in for a consultation or like a a meeting about? Yeah, definitely. We do have those consultations, but the best bet is to to digest all of the information first, because yeah. then there's usually so many personalized questions about your individual academic plan that we need to talk about. Mm-hmm. It's better if you go through all of the resources because there's so much available on our websites. Yeah. Um, take a look, go through all of that first. And then, yeah, come on in. We'd love to chat with you. Beautiful. I'm going to chime in here and say uh, honors college students <laughs> are... I mean, you guys have so much time on your hands, right? Oh, yeah. You guys, oh, yeah, I don't even know time. what kind of work you guys do around here. <laughs> um, you guys do so much and every single experience that you do is valuable. So I'm coming from the lens of my career development, mm-hmm. right? And so um, realizing that as you're taking on those internships, as you're a part of that club and organization, as you um, you know, get that job or you do that service learning project in the community or you volunteer at your church or wherever that might be, all of these are key to developing your professional brand, right? Everybody has a brand, if you think of it that way, just like any big company or organization, you have a unique brand. And so all of your experiences here at APU um, are valuable. And so our office really does wanna help partner with you. Um, Don't be afraid to schedule those appointments with our office. If you Mm -hmm. wanted somebody to kind of look over your resume or help kind of guide you on your path, right? Many of you are double majoring. You have this idea of, I wanna be this, Mm -hmm. right? But that was maybe as a freshman. And then by the time you're a junior, maybe you studied away or maybe you ended up working in a uh, an internship and it kind of changed your original thoughts as to where you wanted to go. Mm-hmm. We want to partner and come alongside with those career exploration type appointments as well, too. So um, get involved early. Right. Uh, don't wait until the end to mm-hmm. take advantage of these great resources. Um, but just know that you guys have such great experiences and we want to partner alongside you with those meaningful experiences as well. Um, APU C-Cell is our Instagram handle at APU C-Cell. Mm-hmm. So we do post uh, content on there for each of our four different service yeah. areas. We'll make sure to, to tag you guys in the description of this of this podcast episode for sure. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, well, thank you both so much. As you guys can see, there's so much content, so many resources, so many things to go to this office for. So I thank you both for your time and hopefully we'll see you guys around. Thanks thanks so much. Love being here. Thank you again to Aaron and Andre for taking all that time to talk with us. I know I, for one, didn't know anything about that office, really, <laughs> besides kind of the, the support with being able to get stuff for your career and like headshots and stuff. So getting to hear about all the different like facets, you know, mm. to throw in a nice little word Good there. Word, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for their department was just such a great opportunity. I'm so grateful for them to, for coming in. Yeah, for sure. And I didn't know that that was the office you go to for study away things. Mm-hmm. And I think for honors in particular, that's such a 
helpful thing to know because we hear about like Oxford study away uh, opportunities, which is so great. But if you want to study away at, in any other part of the world, they are a great office to go to and yeah. learn more about that. Yeah. Yeah. So they were absolutely fantastic. Thank you again to that office. And thank you for taking an inside look at a community dedicated to educating the next generation of disciples and scholars. We will see you next time on Inside the Honors College.